In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Martin Luther King Jr., a fearless citizen of heaven. A fearless citizen of heaven. While Dr. M.L. King Jr. left us with many worthwhile examples that we may pattern our lives after, I have never heard anyone preach about his fearless nature. Let's take a trip down memory lane. <clears throat> On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to a white male. That afternoon, the MIA, Montgomery Improvement Association, was formed, and the Reverend Dr. M. L. King was elected his first president. That was on December 1st, 1955. On January 30th, 1956, almost two months after the Montgomery boycott started, King's home was bombed. King was preaching in the First Baptist Church while his young wife, Coretta, and their 10-week-old Yolanda were in the family home. While his family was in jeopardy and his life on the line, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. left First Baptist Church, calmly walked to his home, quieted the crowd, and speaking to the white press told them that they may do their best to stop him and might even stop him, but they could not stop the movement because God was in the movement. On January 26, 1956, Dr. King was arrested for, for driving 35 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. You ever heard anybody being arrested for driving 35 miles an hour? On February 21st, 1956, King was indicted with other figures of the Montgomery boycott for being a part of a conspiracy to hinder and prevent the operation of business without just cause. On January 27, 1957, an unexploded bomb was found on King's front porch. On September 3rd, 1958, Dr. King was arrested on the charge of lottery. Later they changed it to failure to obey an officer of the law. He was given a hundred dollar bond and released on his own reconnaissance. On September 20, 1958, Isola Ward Kerr stabbed Dr. King with a seven inch letter opener in Harlem, New York. The doctor said that the letter opener was just fractions of an inch from his aorta. And had he sneezed, he would have been dead. On February 17, 1960, a warrant was issued for Dr. King's arrest on the charge of falsifying his 1956 and 1958 state tax return. A warrant for his arrest for his state tax, his state tax, uh, yeah, I said that right? <laughs> state tax return. On December 16, 1961, Dr. King was arrested in Albany, Germany, Albany, Georgia, doing a demonstration. He was charged with obstructing the sidewalk without a permit. Obstructing the sidewalk. On February 27, 1962, Dr. King is tried and convicted for that crime. On April 3, 1963, in Birmingham, Alabama, Chief Eugene Bull Connors demonstrates his racial prowess by uh, using a method of dogs and fire hoses to stop a peaceful demonstration. Just a few days later, April 12, 1963, Dr. King is arrested and sent to a Birmingham jail. You all know that story, don't we? On March 7th, 1965, Bloody Sunday, 
Dr. King, along with 600 other protesters, are attacked by an angry mob. The state police and the local enforcement, as they were marching peacefully from Selma to Montgomery. And on April 4th, 1968, Dr. King is assassinated as he stands on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. He dies later that same day in St. Joseph Hospital of his gunshot wound. For most people, when that bomb exploded in their home, two months after coming to Montgomery, with a brand new wife and a little baby girl, for most people, that would have been it. For most people, they would have gotten the message. There are people here who want to take your life. There are people here who hate you. There are people here who don't even care if they injure your baby girl in the process of trying to get to you. But and for many people, that would have been the end. Some would have given up when he got arrested for traveling 35 miles an hour. They would have understood that that wasn't at all about traffic, that was about power and who had it and who did not. But Dr. King understood something. He understood that we can't be warriors for Christ and be full of fear. He understood that it takes courage to live the Christian ways. You know, 63 times in the Bible, we see the phrase, fear not. 63 times God tells us, fear not. God can't have in his kingdom fearful soldiers. We're commanded not to fear death. We're commanded not to fear the weapons of war. We're commanded not to fear the appearance of angels. <laughs> and most importantly, we're commanded not to fear that the word of God will fail. Much of the problems of life we face comes from fear. Our fear of not being understood in a relationship can often break up a relationship. Our fear of not being successful can often paralyze us and cause us not to continue our education or preparation. Our fear of someone, uh, someone inflicting on us their hatred can stop us from acting in a godly manner. Many times when voices are raised, it's because of fear. Many times when we see erratic behavior, it's because of fear. And because of fear, many people have done things which they would later regret. So Dr. King gives us a model of how Christians ought to live. Christians ought to be as bold as a lion and without fear. Now let's dissect our text for just a minute. It says, do not fret or be anxious about anything. That's what it says in uh, the Amplified Version of the Bible. And we need to realize that God is constantly telling us to drive anxiety and drive fear out of our lives. One of our uh, favorite passages is Matthew chapter 6. And in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us, Therefore I say to you, this is verse 25, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not your life more than meat and your body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? He said, you don't even have to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear or how you're going to make it in life. If God is your God, you don't have any reason to fret. Amen. 
And then we read in that same gospel how many times the disciples were in fear. If we're going to do what God wants us to do, we have to drive out fear. Many times we like to quote the 23rd Psalm. But do we really listen to the 23rd Psalm? In that fourth verse he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When we walk through life, no matter how loud and boisterous the voices may be around us, no matter what danger or trepidation may be on either side, we should hold our heads up and drive all fear out of our hearts because God is still with us. Isaiah 41.10 Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. God is telling us right there in that verse that the reason we are fearful is we forget whose we are. When we realize that God Almighty, the one that spread the stars out in the heavens, the one who breathed in the atom, the breath of life, when we realize that God Almighty is with us, we have nothing to fear. The Bible tells us I'm convinced that neither life nor death nor things present nor things to come can separate us from this God. So he said, don't fear for I am with you. Don't get worried about the bills. Don't get worried about your children's future. Don't get worried about your job. Don't get worried about the recession. I'm still here. I'm still in control. Don't